Jesus is defining Christian leadership here. It almost seems like a paradox. He's saying if you want to be a great leader, not just an ordinary leader, not a leader like the pagan world or the heathen world, he said if you want to be a great leader, he said it's going to begin with a servant heart and a service mind, a service mindset. How can I serve? You see, when we get the picture of a boss, we picture, uh, you know, a big belly hanging over the belt. He walks around and says, come on, you guys, we got to get this job done. The brass up on top are, are, are on me, all over me. We're going to be in trouble. We don't get this job done. You know, and, and they have the clubs and the whips and so forth. But there's a difference between a boss and a leader. Let me give you just some of the differences. A boss commands his subordinates. A leader encourages and motivates them and occasionally has to make a command. The boss depends on fear. If you don't get this job done, you're going to lose your job. But the leader depends on those being led having a desire to do a good job, an excellent job. The boss always finds ways to assign blame for problems. The leader looks for ways to fix the problems. The boss tells people what to do. And you know, there are those that, they'll do everything they're told to do. But when it comes to forward thinking, vision, how can I take this to the next level? They don't have a clue. We talk about competency. And you can look this up on the internet. You can find a book on it. I've read it in leadership books. I've read it in business books. But the four stages of competency, you've got the unconscious incompetent. That's the person that's incompetent in leadership or handling money, whatever it is, but they don't know they're incompetent. Just ask them. They know something about everything. They're unconsciously incompetent, and if a person is unconsciously incompetent in leadership, there is no hope because he doesn't see how incompetent he is or she. And then you've got the conscious incompetent. Now, that's a good place to be. You see, the Bible says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And if we realize that we're incompetent in certain areas, then we can take action, do something about it. I am a conscious incompetent in certain areas. For example, playing the piano, I am a conscious incompetent. I used to be able to sit down at the piano and just play. But you never knew what I was playing. <laughs> I never knew what I was playing. I just, I'd heard those stories about people where the Holy Ghost comes on them and they just sit down and play. I've never played before. I've heard those stories and I thought, Lord, let it happen. It's never happened. <laughs> so I, have, I am a conscious incompetent when it comes to playing the piano. But that's good because now I've got courses in how to play the piano so that I can become the third level, which is a conscious competent. It's Now, conscious competent is where you've got to focus on your competency, and conscious competent leadership is where you have to focus on your leadership all the time, but the best place to get to is the unconscious competent. That's the fourth level. It's where you just have the heart of a leader and you're leading. You don't even know how you're, it's just, it's in you. It becomes a part of you. Now, Christian leadership is not about bossing people, but about influencing people. But you already know that, don't you? Christian leadership seems to be a paradox because you have both servant plus leader. When you have servant plus leader, you have Christian leader. And I look at some of the Christian leaders in this world, both today and past, and I say they're the ones that have really accomplished something for God. 